and Drug Administration. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, campaign 2024 is hitting a higher pitch with three GOP presidential candidates making stops in early primary voting states. And officials in Iowa give an update on the status of a collapsed apartment building where three people remain unaccounted for. Good music, good people, good food. We're here live at the 68th Annual Mountain, or Mountain Heritage, Hope Salad Festival. I was trying to go home for a minute there and some good music behind me. We'll have the full forecast coming for you coming up. Mountain News at 5.30, thankfully, is on the air. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Olivia is on assignment. Campaign 2024 is shifting into high gear. Several GOP presidential hopefuls are making stops in key states today. CBS's Caitlin Huey Burns has more on the day's events from Washington. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis crisscrossed South Carolina Friday, part of his four-day Great American Comeback Tour, hitting 12 locations in three early primary states. His morning began with a rally in Beaufort, where he said this about President Biden's fall on stage in Colorado Thursday. You know, we saw the images yesterday of, of Biden stumbling around, and, uh, you know, honestly, you know, it's a sad thing to see. You don't want to see anyone do that, but... It was frustrating because, honestly, uh, that was symbolic of the state of our country. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott is ramping up his operations in Iowa. Former President Donald Trump, who's campaigning for a second term, took shots at DeSantis while in the state on Thursday. Ron, as I call him, Ron De Sanctimonious for a reason. In New Hampshire, entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy also criticized DeSantis for his handling of Disney during a meeting with legislators. First thing I would have done to handle Disney is, is, as a difference from DeSantis is that I would not have signed into law one of the croniest protections that Disney enjoyed in 2021. The Republican presidential field will get even more crowded next week with former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and former Vice President Mike Pence both expected to jump into the race. Ahead of Pence's announcement, the Department of Justice revealed it will not seek criminal charges against him in the investigation involving classified documents found in his home. Caitlin Huey Burns, CBS News, Washington. The first presidential primary debate will take place on August 23rd in Milwaukee. The RNC has also laid out the polling and donor threshold for the candidates. In order to get a spot on stage, candidates will need to reach at least 1% in three national polls or a combination of national polls and a poll from the early voting states. Candidates will also need a minimum of 40,000 unique donors to a candidate's campaign or exploratory committee, as well as 200 unique donors in at least 20 states. Finally, the candidates must sign a pledge agreeing to support the eventual party nominee. Candidates will have 48 hours before the first debate to present these qualifications to the RNC. Of course, that video there from previous Republican presidential debates. Well, President Biden says he will soon sign the bipartisan bill that raises the nation's debt ceiling and cuts spending. The legislation allows the U.S. government to pay its bills, averting a default and potential economic crisis. CBS's Natalie Brand is at the White House with the latest. President Biden is addressing the nation tonight on the deal that heads off a historic default. There is a gravity, uh, as you all can imagine, of this moment. And so the president wanted to make sure that he addressed the American people directly. The bill is passed. The Senate passed the bipartisan measure late Thursday with more than 60 voting in favor. The bill raises the nation's debt limit beyond the 2024 presidential election. The Congressional Budget Office estimates it also cuts spending by about $1.5 trillion over the next decade. In a last-minute negotiation, Senate leaders pledge commitments to consider emergency spending down the road and additional military aid to support the war in Ukraine, after some GOP senators raised concerns about limits to defense spending. There's not a penny in this budget 
to help beat Putin. President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy negotiated the deal. Political analysts say the mixed reviews from lawmakers across the political spectrum make it the very definition of compromise. And both sides actually made concessions, and we should be, as Americans, proud about seeing our government work in such a fashion. Joe Biden came into this saying that he refused to negotiate, and at the end of the day, he finally caved and uh, gave Republicans some, some spending cuts that, the, that we needed as a country. The bill now heads to the White House for a signature just ahead of Monday's deadline when the Treasury Secretary said the U.S. would start running short of cash to pay its bills. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Credit rating agency Fitch is warning it could still downgrade the U.S. credit rating despite the debt ceiling deal. Its analysts believe repeated political standoffs around the debt limit lowers confidence that U.S. lawmakers can govern on fiscal and debt matters. We have some breaking news out of West Virginia along a border county. Mingo County 911 dispatchers say two people have been at least injured in a shooting. West Virginia State Police say it appears to be an ambush type situation in the Beach Creek area of Mingo County. That's near Matewan. Troopers are handling the investigation and Mingo County Emergency Management have put out a shelter in place notice for the safety of the public. Mingo County schools are on lockdown and the graduation ceremony at Mingo Central High School has been postponed until further notice. We will, of course, update this story as we learn more throughout the night here and on WYMT.com. In the forecast, we're going to continue to see some nice warm weather out there. Just want to clarify one thing I was talking about earlier in the headline. I am actually home. Harlan County is my home, my adopted home. It's Letcher County where the Mountain Heritage Festival is. But here we're seeing some great weather, some great music. Dakota Sailor, who used to work for us at WIMT, is on stage behind me right now. And more great music throughout the evening. Let's get into your forecast, though. Hazard looking pretty good out there. 84 right now at this hour, starting to cool down just a little bit. We're going to continue to see some warmer temperatures. We'll steer here at a steamy 88 in Harlan. No high dew points, though. We're still in 88 in Manchester, in London, in Somerset, in Irvine. You see 90. Lexington and Louisville got a lot more pavement and asphalt up there, but only in the upper 70s at Wise and low 80s there in Clintwood at this hour. Even Pikeville at 83. Dew points a little bit higher in some spots, but mostly in the 40s and 50s right now. So nice breeze blowing. We've got some good weather coming in here. Pinpoint Doppler radar, clear skies, not a drop of rain, not even a cloud in the sky here as I look up over Harlan. So we're in pretty good shape. Now your forecast first, as we head to the next 12 hours, we're going to see those calm conditions and clear skies take us to the overnight hours and we're going to stay dry all the way through tomorrow morning but there is a chance we could see a sprinkle tomorrow i'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes steve all right brandon thank you very much a quick update on that breaking news out of mingo county west virginia we do understand that a west virginia state police trooper was shot in this incident uh, that again appears to be some sort of ambush type situation in the Beach Creek area of Mingo County, West Virginia. Again, we are getting word that a West Virginia uh, police trooper was shot. Uh, we don't know uh, their condition and uh, details are still uh, very scarce at this time. Uh, our sister station, WSAZ, uh, again, reporting that a trooper was shot and uh, they have crews on the way. And of course, we'll keep you updated uh, as we get information here and on WYMT.com. New images have been released showing building conditions just days before the catastrophic partial collapse of an Iowa residential building. Photos, permits, inspection notes, and other official city documents paint a picture of known structural issues and a history of at least one other similar repair. In fact, work was being done on the building in the days leading up to the collapse. CNN's Laura Aguirre has more. This is a very dynamic situation, very fluid. We are doing the best we can. Davenport's fire chief on why search and recovery efforts continue to move, for many, painfully slow. 
Unfortunately, it's something this large. We're looking at days and weeks of how we have to do things. Iowa Task Force One, a specialized urban search and rescue team, swept the site Thursday using dogs trained to find survivors or bodies. Three people remain unaccounted for and are believed to be in the building. The team's chief didn't say exactly what the dogs found, but that phase one was successful. That has allowed us to move to the next phase of our mission, shoring, securing the building for control and recovery. City permits show repair work began just days before the collapse. Workers were fixing a separation between the exterior brick facade and the interior walls, seen here in photos taken by city inspectors May 25th. And surveillance video obtained by CNN Friday shows the moments the wall started to give way May 28th. A city official says an engineering inspection in February showed no risk of, quote, imminent collapse. The same engineer reviewed the repair work that needed to be done in May and did not come to the conclusion that that building had to be evacuated. As recovery efforts move forward, city leaders are also grappling with hindsight. Do I have regrets about this tragedy and about people potentially losing their lives? Hell yeah. Do I think about this every moment? Hell yeah. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. A final determination on the exact cause of the collapse is still under investigation. A partial building collapse in New Haven, Connecticut today caused several people to be taken to the hospital. Officials at Yale New Haven Hospital say one person is in serious condition. The others have non-life-threatening injuries. The New Haven mayor says there were no deaths. No other details have been released yet. We'll be right back. The WIMT News app.